Welcome to this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast. I'm your host, Surreal Joe Quinn. Quinn, recording this on a Tuesday uh, as we near Thanksgiving. Uh, we're already amazingly halfway through the month of November, seemingly, but well, by the end of the week, we will be close to the halfway uh, part, part of November. And the sweet part in regards to the football season, college and pro. Uh, we, as always, we begin, this course is episode 980 of the Real Deal Podcast, and we're going to begin, as always, with the game of the week, and frankly, one of the games of the year. Um, Baltimore, again, edges the Cincinnati Bengals 35-34. I believe the score of the first game was 35-28. These two games have been, frankly, two of the five best games of the entire football season. Just off the charts quarterback play. Um, Jamar Chase, you know, Derrick Henry in the first game, Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow in both games have just been just unstoppable in both these games. And it comes down to in essence a two point conversion that was not that was not converted by Cincinnati Bengals. Uh they lose again. Uh a tough loss for the Bengals. Um uh, in Cincinnati, excuse me, in Baltimore, despite the fact that Joe Burrow throws for four touchdowns and 428 28 yards, and despite the fact that they held uh, Baltimore to 99 yards rushing, which, you know, that is doing, you're basically shut. If you can hold Baltimore under 150 yards rushing, I think you're doing your job, doing your job, hold them under 100. That's basically shutting the running game down. But again, as always, the difference, a couple things. Um, of course, Cincinnati's defense is awful. It's been awful all year long. But the story has been, continues to be the play of one Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson in this game, 25 of uh, 33, four t- 290 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. For the year, Lamar Jackson is at 24 touchdowns and two interceptions. He's the number one rated quarterback in QBR and quarterback rating. He, um, is just has just been completing sixty nine percent of his passes. He has absolutely taken the next step in regards to uh, the next level of, in regards to his quarterbacking. He currently comes into this week uh, second in passing yards, number one in touchdowns, and again number one in, in QBR and quarterback rating. Only two interceptions. Um, listen. We all know Baltimore season comes down to in essence a beating one team. That uh, we 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 I, we understand that 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 that's what it is. That's you know when you are a championship organization like the Ravens have been, they have two Super Bowls. They went into a number of conference championship games, went to a conference championship game, and of course lost uh, last year to the Kansas City Chiefs. That's you know that's the me- that's the bar. That's the standard. I understand that, but you cannot ignore the progress of one Lamar Jackson, who's still only 27 years old, already a two-time MVP. And, and if votes were taken right now, he would be a three-time MVP. He, I know I've been pushing the Josh Allen uh, train for MVP. I, and everybody, and everybody so, Josh Allen does not have near the amount of talent uh, around him that Lamar Jackson, Jackson has, but uh, he has definitely played at in terms of who's played better football, it's clearly been Lamar Jackson. I think Josh Allen has, has been phenomenal. But as of right now, if I had a vote, which I don't, it would go to Lamar Jackson. He has been um he has taken the next step. Uh again, this was a game where Cincinnati did an excellent job at containing him in regards to running the football. He had seven you no know, seven carries for thirty three yards, no touchdowns. You if you're defending Lamar Jackson, you absolutely will take that. If I can keep him out the end zone and hold him to 33 yards, and then that's telling me I'm making him a pocket quarterback. Well, the problem is he's beating people from the pocket. So if he's beating you from the pocket, then you have no chance. You have zero chance, especially with the threat with, with Derrick Henry. You still have to, to to honor him. So, you you know, he's going to get those one-on-one coverages out on the outside. His receiver, Zay Flowers, uh, has played has played well. Uh, has had an excellent season. He's developed other uh, talent. You know, Andrews has picked it up. Um, 
you know, even in this game, Jay Flowers wasn't even a major factor. Yeah, Tylon, Tylon, or Tylon Wallace had a big game with the three catches, 115 yards. So he's able to spread the ball. He doesn't just lock in on one receiver. He's able to spread the ball around. It's been spectacular. He's been, uh, and, you know, again, a lot. There have been a number of Lamar Jackson detractors. I, you really can't say anything this year about Lamar, anything bad about Lamar Jackson. He's played, again, he's played at an MVP type level, MVP caliber level. And he's going to have to play this way in, in, in the whole season in, in order for Baltimore to win the championship because, frankly, their defense, not going, listen, Cincinnati has a top offense. Burrow is top five in his position. Chase Brown, uh, not Chase Brown, Chase, um, Jamar Chase is top five, is a top three receiver. So they have, we know they have weapons. But bad offensive line. Um, they have a bad offensive line. Running game is not, has hasn't been the same without mixing. Um, but their defense, the Baltimore defense, is a problem. That that is the that is what keeps you uh, not going all in on Baltimore as a team that is going to be Kansas City or will win the Super Bowl. They're not going. to, I'm telling you right now, they're not going to win the Super Bowl or even get to the Super Bowl playing defense like this. Their defense is too it, like Jamar Chase, and again, Chase is a top receiver. We know he's a a, a, a legit All Pro caliber receiver. But a couple of those passes, a couple of those catches, like literally, there was like no, there was nobody there. Like they were, like where are there was? I don't know what the coverage was. I can't even I can't even call it a busted coverage. There was no coverage. Now again, part of that is Chase's greatness, but also part of that is just how bad. Baltimore's defense has been, and I don't understand why they're so bad. They have players on the defense. They have uh, like <laughs> they have some top players on on that side of the ball. It's inexcusable for their defense to be a bottom half caliber defense. They should not, especially with the type of offense that they have. So they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to fix that defense to be at least respectable. I don't say that they have to be with the kind of offense they have that they have to be a top five, top ten defense. But right now, that defense is not a is not even come coming close to being a championship caliber defense. And they will they will get picked off in the playoffs if they continue playing defense like this. But right now they have the MVP of the league and they are right there in terms of the division right there with Pittsburgh uh, compete for the, uh, the the AFC North and a top two spot uh, in the uh, AFC. And as far as Cincinnati goes, listen, despite how poorly they've played, despite their four and six record, they're only one game out of the, the last playoff spot. So if you're Cincinnati, you're still right there. And it's not like the teams ahead of you is a, a juggernaut in terms of the Denver uh, Broncos. Uh, we know how some of the offensive struggles that they can have, good defense, but, some, but they offensively are challenged. Um, so, you know, Cincinnati is not, you know, don't be surprised if Cincinnati does make the playoffs. I, again, the way they play defense, they put so much pressure on Burrow. Burrow has to be like, <laughs> Burrow has to be the MVP and the best player on the field, every best quarterback on the field every night, like every game in. Like, and, and in this game, I mean, you, he made a bit, he, I could have made a case that he was the best quarterback on the field, but it still wasn't enough. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, with Cincinnati, I had no. And by the way, I had no problem with Cincinnati going forward. At the end, they had no chance to stop at, at holding at holding Lamar Jackson and Baltimore to a field goal uh, with that last possession. So I had zero problem with 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 uh, with, uh, with the coach going for it. I I fully expected them to go for two. I would have went for two. So frankly, you cannot challenge uh, that that particular play call and that particular decision. Twenty four. Excellent game to watch in uh, Landover with the with the Commanders in Pittsburgh. Uh, unfortunately for the Commanders, it didn't go their way. They lose 28-27. Um, very physical game. It was, you know, it kind of like was a, a high-scoring rock fight. Yards were hard to come by. Uh, they hold the Commanders to 242 yards, total yards. Pittsburgh, I think, only had like 312 yards. Uh Russell Wilson made a couple of plays. I uh, get the touchdown pass to Mike Williams. Some sweet redemption for him, as he as you remember, you know he gets called out uh, by Aaron Rodgers for running the wrong route and, gets, and got called out in a press conference at that. So you know what he gets, you know he 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 moves on to Pittsburgh. He has a chance to possibly even make the Super Bowl while the Jets are in the tank. So. I mean, if you listen, I, as a fan of the the Commanders, I wasn't happy for happy about the touchdown. But certainly, if you're just a casual football fan, you have to be 
And again, it was a sweet revenge, so to speak, for Mike Williams. Him ended up playing the Pittsburgh. He catches the game with a touchdown, uh, passing this game. Again, very physical game. This was a this was a game for the this was a, a chin strap chin strap game. Two physical teams. Pittsburgh. I you know again I'm, I watch of course every Commanders game. Pittsburgh defended Jaden Daniels. Uh, as well as any team has by far better than any team, better than any team has defended him all season long. He only has three carries for five yards. They made they took his legs away from him and said, "Hey, you are going to beat us in the pocket." Now, to his credit, he didn't he did not get frustrated by not being able to run uh, or make plays uh, or make plays with his legs. He didn't make it. He did not make the critical mistake with a with a turnover or force anything. So you got to give him credit for that. He missed a couple of throws, but also didn't get help from a couple of receivers in terms of drop passes. Ertz had a couple of drop passes. Noah Brown dropped a touchdown that they end up scoring on anyway. Uh, good. This was a good character building game for Washington. Uh, this was a playoff type game. Great atmosphere as the Pittsburgh fans take over. It does. And again, I don't blame the Washington fans. Washington is just getting back to where. They're, they they're creating a home field. They have been four and zero coming into this game, but Pittsburgh they have they are a national brand. Pittsburgh goes into any stadium, so I don't. I'm, it normally it bothers me uh, as a as a as a Washington fan to see other fans uh, come into to the, to the stadium. But part of that is because they've been losing for like the last twenty five years. But this game didn't bother me as much because that's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh again is a national team. I'm not quite sold on Pittsburgh as a Super Bowl cap Super Bowl team. They're going to make the playoffs. They're gonna. We we know that they might even win that win a division. They have a showdown against Baltimore this week. They're definitely going to make the playoffs. I'm not quite. I know we know they have a top top defense. Uh, T.J. Watt being one of the best players in the league, and they uh, Cam Hayward is back to him to dominating. So we know what they can do defensively. Excellent defense, but offensively, I still not even with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson has is he's respectable. Uh, he's not what he was in his heyday, but he's. A, a, you know, he's brought a, a, an adult quarterback to the room, but to put you that way, he's been a much better option than Justin Fields. So, like I, you know, I give him credit from give him credit from that standpoint. I'm not quite there yet in terms of them being a Super Bowl contender. Now, maybe that changes with what transpired with what may transpire with them in Baltimore. But there's two very good teams, two teams that um, will be, I think, will be um, in the playoffs. Kansas City uh, stays undefeated, uh, 16-13. Um, they, excuse me, 14-13. Uh, they get a, a field goal block at the end that would have um, that would have won the game uh, for uh, for Denver. Excuse me, it was 16-14. My bad. My, my apologies. 16-14 Kansas City. Uh, they block a game, a potential game winner, winning field goal at the end. Um, this is what obviously what Kansas City does. Uh, they have won now 12 straight one possession game, one possession games. They have won 15 straight overall, even that playoffs included. Um, Patrick Mahomes. Is nineteen and fourteen when trailing by double digits going in, into into going into the fourth quarter, which is just that is a that is a fifty seven percent winning a five seventy eight winning percentage. The next guy is like the winning percentage is like four twenty one. Like it is that is one of the more unbelievable stats that you will ever see to have a winning record trailing by double digits going to the fourth quarter is just uh, it is is unreal. This team is never they they're never out of a game, um, and again I listen I'll I'll tell you about Kansas City Kansas City. This is just who they are as far as they have embraced this identity. We're going to be a defensive first team. We have a great field goal kicker, and if Patrick Mahomes has to make a play at the end, he will make a play at the end. Now, you want to get nervous, somewhat nervous, if you really want to nitpick. If you're a Kansas City fan, even despite the fact that your team has won 15 straight games, playoffs included, 9-0 this year, you probably, with a win, you're probably going to wrap up a home field if you're able to beat Buffalo this week. Um, you want to talk about Mahomes and not having the type of not having the type of year of a top quarterback, of an MVP caliber quarterback. Uh, okay, but keep this in mind. Brady, 
early in his career, won won a Super Bowl in 20, 2004, he won a Super Bowl where he completed like 60% of his passes, was like 28 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. How I know that? Because he was on my fancy team in 2004. That was my probably my first year playing fancy football. So, I you know, they again, this is who they are. They're going to play their, their strength right now, their team, is their defense, period. Their defense, the offensive line is good enough. They have these long drives that control the clock. Even if they don't get a touchdown, they just, that sucks the life out of your defense in terms of time and possession. They've had, I think, more double-digit play drives than any team uh, in football. Uh, and this is what they do. They've morphed. This is who they morphed into. This is the way they're gonna they're gonna win. They are more, they are the most comfortable team in in a one possession in a close game than any than, than I've ever I've never seen a team be this dominant in in these close games ever. Here, I mean, not nah, since let me take that back since since the days of of the New England Patriots. Since the days of New England Patriots, they they are they are they are the new Patriots from that standpoint. They are so comfortable. And again, similar similar. Uh, Similar ingredients, great, great coach, great quarterback, uh, great field goal kicker, and a and a opportunistic defense. I actually think their defense, their defense right now, is, it might be even better than some of those Patriot defenses uh, uh, way back when. To be honest with you, so um, Kansas City does what it does. They have a showdown with Buffalo in Buffalo uh, coming up on Sunday. Strange game. Um, in uh, in Houston, Detroit somehow gets by the the Houston Texans twenty six twenty three. This was a this is a devastating loss for Houston from a standpoint. If not so much, they're not going to make the playoffs because I think they're going to win that division and make the playoffs. But just you lose a game where the opposing quarterback throws five picks. You are plus three in the in the turnover battle. You hold Detroit to one hundred and five yards rushing, which is basically like shutting them down, and you still find a way to lose the game. It's a tough. That's a tough bit of pill to swallow if you're if you're Houston, uh, coming off a loss, to, uh, coming off a horrible loss to the Jets. That's going to look worse and worse as the Jets continue just to just shit in the bed uh, with another embarrassing loss at their at, at their disposal, and. Again, Detroit did not. Detroit played one half of football in this 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 game. They played one good half of football. They outscored Houston uh, in the second half, uh, nineteen nothing, thirteen nothing in the fourth quarter. And Detroit does is doing what good teams do, similar to Kansas City. They know how to win close games, and they know how to turn it on when they have to when they have to play well. They know how to turn it on at the appropriate time. So excellent win for Detroit. Strange win for Detroit, but they'll take it. They continue to be up t- on top of the NFC with an eight and one record, and right as of right now, the favorite in the NFC to get to the Super Bowl. I would say uh, Buffalo continues to roll thirty to twenty over Indianapolis. This Indianapolis, this game was really never in doubt. Buffalo basically beat Indianapolis with his B minus game because uh, Josh Allen did not play well in this game, but Buffalo was able to win this game with their defense and uh, running game. And our running game and Buffalo's defense does what it does is it takes the ball away. Three Joe drove Joe Flacco interceptions did Indianapolis in. Uh Buffalo now of course will play their arch nemesis, the Kansas City Chiefs at home. And listen, um looking at the standings in the NFL right now, uh I I personally think that home field advantage for the Chiefs is 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 is, is wrapped up uh injuries with standing. If Kansas City beats Buffalo, then it will be completely wrapped up because they will be. Then you you will have uh, Buffalo will be three games. They will, in essence, Buffalo will be three and a half games out of uh, well, two and a half games out, including well, three with the uh, three and a half games if you include the head to head. Ravens already have three losses. Pittsburgh, if Pittsburgh loses, that will give them three losses. So this, I don't think anybody, I, I think really Kansas City can seal home field advantage if they win this game against Buffalo. Of course, these teams have had just a tremendous rivalry over the last, you know, five years. Buffalo has actually owned Kansas City in a regular season, but in the postseason, it's been a completely different story as Buffalo has is is 0 and 3 against Kansas City including just a devastating loss last year in Buffalo in Buffalo at home field in that um that divisional playoff in that divisional playoff game which I a game I thought Buffalo was actually going to win 
uh, was going to win, but it was not in the cards for the uh, for the Bills. Really a showdown, really a feast of famine week uh, coming up in the NFL week 11. Um, big time showdown in the AMC East with the division on the line with the division, uh, not division title, but first place on the line between Philadelphia and Washington. Philadelphia, Washington will travel to Philadelphia. This is a, this is a, you know, a, a measurement, a, a measuring stick game for the Florida, the commanders. Uh, Philadelphia has been used to playing these big, big games over the course of four or five years. These divisional games where they are with first places at stake, they are, you know, they have been the standard in the division for the last couple of years going to the Super Bowl two years ago. So this will be a nice, te- a great test for the Commanders. Commanders, relatively, like, look at some of the big games Commanders have had this season against top competition. They, you know, acquitted themselves somewhat well. Okay. Uh, they acquitted themselves somewhat good against Baltimore and Pittsburgh, but the problem is they have losses to both those teams. So, this one right here again in the division. Now, good thing the good thing about the Commanders losing to Pittsburgh and Baltimore; those were out of conference losses. Uh, so they're still, so it doesn't hurt them from that standpoint. But right now, uh, both these teams, the Eagles and Commanders, are two and zero in the division. Uh, this is uh, in the in the conference. Washington is five and one. So really big game. Washington is able to win this. They'll be they'll be back in first place in the comp in the division. And they will push their conference record to six and one. So really, I think I think a bigger game for Washington than Philadelphia. Philadelphia knows what they're like. like Philadelphia has been here, done that. They've been to a Super Bowl. They know they've almost climbed to the mountaintop with with this with this particular group. Washington still a young up and coming team with a rookie quarterback. Uh, so we'll see how they handle that pressure of a prime time game uh, in the in the uh, in the division. And of course, you have again. Baltimore Pittsburgh will be a you talk about a rock fight, you talk about physicality. It'd be interesting to watch that game considering how bad Baltimore's defense is and also how well Pittsburgh was able to defend Jaden Daniels. Now, this is a whole different deal because, you know, as as great as Jaden Daniels is gonna be, uh, he's not Lamar Jackson. And if you're Baltimore, if you're Pittsburgh, you have Derrick Henry. Washington doesn't have a Derrick Henry. So I'll be, from a strategic standpoint, I'll be fascinating. That'll be a fascinating game to watch Baltimore, uh, to watch uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's defense defend Baltimore, uh, defend the Ravens. I have a feeling that that probably will be a defensive game considering how well those teams know each other and considering uh, just the physical, just how, just the physicality of both those teams, uh, despite how poorly. Baltimore's defense uh, has played. Who won the week? The Cleveland Cavaliers, 12 and 0. They start the season off 12 and 0. They're still not close to uh, Golden State, which, if you remember, coming off the championship year in 2015, started the season out, started the season with an NBA record 24 and 0. I don't think that will ever be approached, to be honest with you. Uh, in, in the 15 16 season, of course, that did not. that. That led to them winning seventy three games, but of course they had a collapse against the Cleveland Cavaliers in the twenty sixteen uh, NBA Finals in in seven games and losing Game Seven at home. But this is a great story for Cleveland. Uh, they were expected to be a playoff team, but I don't think anybody expected them to gel and mesh. They're shooting lights out from three point range. They absolutely took Golden State apart on Friday. Golden State is playing great basketball. We'll talk about them in a couple minutes. Uh, took Golden State apart, put 136 on Golden State. And Golden State has been one of the better defensive teams in the league so far. So they're getting great ball movement, shooting the lights out, and they're not depending on Donovan Mitchell to do everything. They have a lot of nice pieces. Mobley has taken a, 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 a another has taken us not gonna say a big step, but he's taking a step in the right direction. He's playing well. He played with Mobley. Evan Mobley had a, a nice playoffs. Played well in the playoffs in the, last year, so you can kind of see you could kind of see this coming. But great story for Cleveland. Uh, we don't have to hear that you know Donovan Mitchell on another team. That's, that that talk has quieted down. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, with uh, Cleveland moving forward. Cleveland, listen, with the, with the, Cleveland is going to be a top, probably a top two seed. I don't see them falling be, below two. And, you know, they'll be, you know, Boston will be right there with them ch- challenging for the best record uh, in the conference. Uh, as far as uh, Golden State goes, um, as, we talk, as we get to real thoughts, 
Um, as far as Golden State goes, Golden State has played great this year. It was something that I did not expect. You look at Golden State, uh, they're 8-2. They've had some big wins over uh, Oklahoma City and Boston, both at both on the road, by the way, uh, in, in those respective buildings. Now, keep this in mind about the, the Oklahoma City game. Um, Chet Hogan got hurt, and he's going to be out for anywhere from, I believe, 8 to 10 weeks with that hip, that, that hip injury. Uh, which is a big injury for uh, a huge injury for Golden for Oklahoma City, but they're deep enough to where it won't like put a dent. In, it doesn't kill their season, of course, but that's a big loss. And Jalen Brown was out in the Boston game, so just keep that in mind. Uh, just keep that in mind um, in regards to that. You always got to look at those injuries. Uh, you know, it's a long season. You always got to keep that in mind. Uh, but in regards to that. Um, Golden State has played great basketball. They they are playing thirteen players. Uh, you look at uh, you know Steph Curry leads them in minutes at twenty eight minutes a game. So nobody's playing thirty minutes a game. They so you know you can keep him fresh. Uh, you can keep him fresh for the playoffs. Um, you know you can keep him fresh for the playoffs. They have he's going to check home. It's going to be reevaluated in eight to ten weeks. So it doesn't mean that he's going to be back in eight to ten weeks so that that is it's going to be it you know that's listen if he was going to get hurt this would be the time so it's still it's still early in the season to where he could be back hopefully you know by uh by the all-star break but uh by the all-star break but golden state right now has a lot of balance they have at least they have 13 players who are playing at least 12 or more minutes um getting some great, great production from Buddy Hill. Wiggins has returned somewhat to the form he had a couple of years ago uh, when they won a championship in 2022. Draymond has been solid. Steph Curry, uh, you know, has, Steph Curry hasn't had to be Steph Curry, uh, you know, uh, in terms of being a, a top five player. He hasn't had to play, but, he, you know, he's still capable of having, having big games, still shooting the ball well, uh, 43 from three-point range, 47% from the field overall. So Golden State and they're playing unbelievable defense. They have a bunch of wing def- def- defensive players. When you talk about Wiggins, when you talk about Kaminga and, and what have you, so they can match up with a number of wing. They can match up with teams with excellent wing players. Again, I still think you can go to work on go to town on them in the post. I still think you can go to town on them if you're a Joker, if you're Anthony Davis. Those guys, they still have a tough, tough, tough time matching up with. But again, right now. Right now, they're playing, they're playing excellent basketball. We'll see how long it lasts over the course of the season. Uh, over the course of the season, they seem to find, they seem to have an identity of, of how they want to play uh, with the ball movement, also with the defense, with the with the defense flying all over the place. And that that's what we returned. What was returned this year? Last year, they were they were not good defensively. Last year, uh, this year, that identity of defense has returned. Um, has returns of, uh, for them. But yeah, last year, the defensive rating, they were middle of the pack defensively, uh, 15th. Uh, this year, uh, this season, they, uh, again, this season, they are a top three. At, in terms of defensive rating, they are a top five defensive rating. They're fifth uh, defensive rating and seventh in points uh, uh, points allowed. Uh, as far as Nikolai, Nikolai, Nikolai Joker, um, Djokovic, 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 uh, we like. I don't want to hear about any MVP fatigue or what have you. He's playing. He's the best player in the world right now. He's averaging twenty nine, thirteen, and eleven. He's averaging a triple double, shooting fifty six percent from the field, fifty six percent from the three point range, and eighty four percent from the line. So fifty six, fifty six, eighty four splits. That number team is seven and three. They have no business being seven and three. He was the reason why they are seven and three. Keep in mind. Now, Westbrook has had, you know, got off to a slow start the first three games where he basically couldn't hit the side of a barn, has had a couple of big games, uh, had a big game against um, against OKC on, uh, I think it was Thursday. I believe it was Thursday or Friday. I want to say Thursday. Um, play, and, you know, Westbrook is going to do Westbrook shit. Some days he'll be, he'll look like the old Westbrook. There'll be other days where you don't want him on, the, on, the, on, him on your team. So that's where, that's kind of where he's at right now in terms of his career. But the Joker right now, uh, playing the best basketball of his career, I, I feel. And this team, again, has no business being seven to three. 
you look at what's going on in Denver versus what's going on in Milwaukee, uh, you know, the talent gap is not that big between those two when they in terms of their supporting cast. And and in the West is probably a deeper conference and Denver is seven and three and Milwaukee is, is in the tank at two and eight. And, you know, Denver again, Aaron Gordon is hurt. Jamal Murray is not Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. are not what they once were. Oh, okay. They're starting to get some production out of Terry Watson, some of the younger players, Christian Brown. But it's been all just it's been all Joker. Like Joker lead, like he leads the league in total points, rebounds, and assists. And again, again, he has to again. He he has played just shoot playing thirty eight minutes a game. We'll see how long that lasts. And uh, I don't again. He he's he's gonna be right in the mix again for MVP. As a matter of fact, you're giving MVP out right now. He would have to be your top one in your top three candidates. No, no less than three. He would have to be. He's played on that on that. Uh, he's played at that level. So uh, nice start to the NBA. Nice start to the NBA season. Minus the injuries. Now, we've had a lot of injuries already. You have Chet Holmgren, Jai Morant, Kevin Durant. That's Kevin Durant. Also, uh, Davis has been kind of in and out. So that's something you don't like to see uh, early on, early in the season uh, with a lot of, with these players in regards to some, some of these injuries. Um, Holmgren seems to be the most serious one in terms of, like I, like I said earlier, eight to ten weeks. He could be out eight to ten weeks minimum. But um, something to keep your eye on. Uh, Durant was playing just unbelievable before he got hurt with the calf strain, with the calf muscle. He's going to be out a couple of weeks. Uh, again, he's in year 18. So I, I think Durant at this point stage in his career, you can basically chalk him, put him down. He's going to miss, he's going to miss anywhere from 20 to 25 games. It's just, I mean, he's been, been in the league since 2007. That's a, that's a long, it's a lot, it's a lot of mileage on, on the, there's a lot of mileage. That's a long time to be playing basketball. Um, again, I think that his skill set and how he how easily he still scores makes us forget that just how old he is. And, uh, you know, at what I think Durant's what, thirty. I want to say Durant's thirty five, thirty six. Going to be, I think he just, I think he just turned thirty five, I believe. So, um, or just thirty five or thirty six. But regardless, he's been in the league for a long time. So you, you know, Phoenix is playing good basketball. One of one of ton of close games. The NBA uh, NC tournament begins this evening. You have to return. You have Clay Thompson going back to Golden State. Um, he's playing well, and of course, Joel Joel and B will be playing against make his season debut as he you know his his, his suspension is up against the New York Knicks. Uh, very interesting to see how many minutes he plays in that particular game. Listen, I understand. Look, they, the Raiders were were very good. Um, that's why we're getting the second year of this in, in, in season tournament. But as a basketball, as somebody, I I can't put too much stock. I, I don't. I guess the question would be to a casual fan because the basketball nerds are going to watch all the NBA games. I mean, guys like me who watch who have NBA league pass, they're not they're not going for us. They, they, the NBA wants the casual fan. I just don't understand why you think the NBA thinks that the casual fan should get pumped up about a game in the middle of November, in the middle of the football, in, in, at, with the football season really in, in all the way in, in full gear. Like, I, I know, I know they want to convince us that the players care more about these games. And, I, and who knows about that? That's, I mean, that, uh, I, don't, I don't know how much, I, I, until they get to like the finals or semifinals, I don't know how much harder the players are playing. But I, right now, it's, these are just not. It's, it's these are just another game. Another game to me. I mean, I, I'm. This more about NB returning and about Clay Thompson coming back to Golden State than about this in season tournament. To be honest with you, that's going to wrap it up for this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast. Have a great, have a have a great rest of your week. So long.